Well, welcome to our lesson on nonlinear inequalities. In this lesson, we're going to be learning how to solve polynomial inequalities and also to how to solve rational inequalities. The process we're going to use for solving polynomial and rational inequalities will be this. We're first of all going to find all the zeros of the function. Then we will create intervals on a number line from those real zeros. And that will help us to create a sign chart, which will help us to solve our inequalities. So let's start by looking at an example. In this example, we have an inequality, x squared minus 6x minus 30 is greater than negative 3. The very first step you're always going to want to do is to get your inequality on one side of the inequality sign so that you have a zero on the other side. In this case, we would be adding three to both sides, which gives us this inequality. Then what we're going to do is we're going to treat that just like a regular polynomial equation, and we're going to find the zeros. Now, we've already gone through how to find the zeros of polynomial equations. We have a lot of strategies for doing that. I'm not going to go through that in this video. So we're assuming we already know how to do that because we've covered this material. Um, we can go ahead and factor this one, and we end up with x plus 3 and x minus 9. Those are the values that will go on our number line. We set each factor equal to 0, and that gives us a negative 3 and a positive 9 on our number line. Then what we're going to do is now we have three intervals. We have left of negative 3, between 3, negative 3 and 9, and greater than 9. So we are going to pick test values in each of those intervals. These are completely random. You can choose what you want. I chose negative 4 because it's left of negative 3. 0 is between there and 10 is to the right of 9. So our process is going to be take the test point and plug it into each of those factors and see what you get out, whether it's a positive or a negative. If I plug in negative 4 to my first factor, I get a negative. If I plug in negative 4 to my second factor, I, always, I also get a negative. Likewise for 0 and for 10. Now our sign chart, we're thinking of having factors that are multiplied. So when I multiply two negatives, I get a positive. A positive and a negative gives me a negative, and two positives give me a positive. So now I have my sign chart completed. I should be able to figure out uh, when this linear inequality or nonlinear inequality is greater than zero. And what that means is where is it above the x axis? So graphically, this particular problem is a quadratic. So it's a parabola. It opens up because our leading coefficient is positive. We want to know where it is positive. Well, our sign chart told us to the left of negative 3 and to the right of positive 9. Those are the two areas shown in red in the graph. And so that's exactly right. Now notice we don't have an equal to with our inequality. It's only greater than. So we will use parentheses and not um, the brackets for indicating the endpoints. So anything from negative infinity up to negative 3, but not including negative 3, and anything greater than 9. Those will all be solution sets of that nonlinear inequality. Here's another example. If we know the real zeros and their multiplicity and the function's end behavior, we can create a sign chart without testing the values like we just did. Okay, so we know how to solve these. Okay, we've already spent lots of time doing that. So the first thing you need to do is to find the real zeros. And those real zeros can be found using lots of different um, methods. We're not going to cover that again in this video. Uh, once you find the zeros, you set each factor equal to zero, put it on your number line, and these are the real zeros for this cubic polynomial. Okay, I found three real zeros. My degree was 3, so I have found all of them. They each have a multiplicity of 1. My end behavior for this function, we know that because it is positive, as x goes to plus infinity, it goes to plus infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, the function goes to negative infinity. So that is my end behavior for this function. And I thought I had some 
sign charts in here for you. There they are, okay? So as x goes to plus infinity, it goes to plus. Negative infinity goes to negative. So now when I make a sign chart, each zero causes a sign change. We know that every time we have a zero, it crosses the x-axis. So it started negative right here. Then it will cross and go to positive, and that will cross again, go to negative, and it will cross again and go to positive. So we know that these always alternate. Every time we have a real zero, it crosses the x-axis. So the sign changes, which changes our sign chart. So our original inequality says, where is this thing less than or equal to zero, meaning where is it negative? And our sign chart shows us that it's negative when it's less than negative one, and it's also negative between negative two-thirds and three. Now notice that we have the equal to with our inequality. So our solution set is from negative infinity to negative one, including negative one, because of the equal to sign, in union with the interval between negative two-thirds and three, including the endpoints. When a polynomial function doesn't intersect the x-axis, we get some strange things that happen. So here's an example, x squared plus 5x plus 8 is less than 0. I have a screenshot on my calculator of what that looks like graphically. We know that it, since it doesn't touch the x-axis, there are no real zeros. This is asking where is it less than 0, where is it negative? Well, it, it never gets negative. So this one, there are no real zeros, so we have the empty set for our solution, or no solution. Same function, where is it greater than or equal to 0? So that's asking us, where is this thing above the x-axis? Well, it's always above the x-axis, so it's all real solutions from negative infinity to infinity. Here's another example, x squared minus 10x plus 25 greater than 0. If we factor that thing, this is a perfect square, and it's x minus 5 times x minus 5. So we could write that as x minus 5 squared. So we notice that it has one real 0, x equals 5, but it has multiplicity 2. Now remember when we have an even multiplicity, then this function will not cross the x-axis, but it'll touch the x-axis. So in this case, our solution set is from negative infinity to 5, union 5 to infinity. There's no equal to, so we have to not include the 5 in our solution set. And on the other side, same function again. We already factored that, but this one's asking us where is it less than or equal to 0? And it's less than or equal to 0, only equal to 0 at x equals 5. It's never less than 0 on this one. This one's a parabola, and it touches at 5. That's the vertex. So the solution set for this one is only at 5. So remember that polynomial functions only change signs when they have the real zeros. When it crosses the x-axis, um, that's where our real zeros are. So that's where we change signs. A rational function changes signs at the real zeros or at points of discontinuity. So we have learned to make a sign chart for our rational functions. And that sign chart will include the zeros of both the numerator and denominator. And so first of all, we want to start by getting a single rational expression on one side. Okay. So this one we have a zero on the right, but we need a common denominator here. So in order to get a common denominator, our common denominator will be x minus 6 times x plus 1. So each of those we will have to multiply by a fraction that's equal to 1. We can distribute our 4 through the parentheses and distribute our 2 through the parentheses, giving us this, 4x plus 4, 2x minus 12. And then combining our like terms, we get a 6x and a minus 8. And now we have a single rational expression. We have one fraction, and so we are ready to look at what goes on our sign chart. If we set our numerator equal to 0 and each of our factors in the denominator equal to 0, we are able to get the numbers that go on our number line, a negative 1, a positive 6, and this one works out to be a positive 4 thirds. So now we need to have test points in each of those intervals. And I chose negative 2, 0, 2, and 7. 
So if I plug in negative 2 into each of these three factors, what sign do I get? Do I get a positive or a negative? Well, in the numerator, I get a negative. Denominator, both factors give me a negative. So I have three negatives, which gives me a positive, or excuse me, gives me a negative. When I test zero, the numerator is negative. Denominator is a negative times a positive. So that ends up being a positive. When I test x equals 2, I get a positive in the numerator, a negative for x minus 6, and a positive for x plus 1, giving me overall a negative value. And lastly, when I test x equals 7, I get a positive in the numerator and a positive for both factors in the denominator, giving me a positive end result. This inequality is asking me when is this greater than 0? No equal to sign, just greater than. So I'm positive or greater than 0 in these two intervals. So between negative 1 and positive 4 thirds, and then anything greater than 6. So my solution set is from negative 1 to positive 4 thirds, union 6 to infinity. Notice we use parentheses because there's no equal to with the inequality. That will do it for this video. Here are your lesson check problems. You have seven problems to work on in your notes. So solve those for our next class, and we will see you next time.